they'll be calling you a radical. I hope this video does this justice on this dramatic scene. I've lived here my whole life. This is the most dramatic day of weather since I was a boy in 68 when a tornado hit my house. But that's not inches of snow. That's feet, multiple feet. It's insanity. What's the day? Wow, wow, wow. A lot of things to talk about. And the reason I'm using this shot, that's the Olympic 2002 downhill. As it comes out now that Mayor of Fukushima says he wants to have the torch run through there. These fucking people are insane. Insane. The IOC, I, I want to talk about how corrupt the Olympics were here in 2002. As I protested, that's Earl Holden who's dead now. They tapped the ancient grandest aquifer in the world, John Kirk. We, uh, we didn't need to go underground to get water. Right there, our water supply here, the greatest aquifer on earth. Yeah, the Olympic Committee, the IOC, those corrupt fuckers, mega cash. The IOC is the IAA. They are the exact same people. The nuclear cartel, they put a gun to the head of the taxpayers. They rob and rape and they just rake in billions of dollars. They're the same people. The Olympic, I put up a video the day they announced it. Vision Not So 2020. I want to talk about the another freaking brick in the wall of non-transparency. Another brick in the wall that we cannot see. Hey you, out there in the hall. Hey you, always doing what you're told. Can you fucking help me? It's ice wall, really? I mean, 1,200 fucking days later? These people are insane, but who's even more insane? The American populace. And I want to talk about this. I hope I don't break down and start crying, but I probably will. So heartbreaking yesterday. I knew that Tony Gwynn had cancer. He was born within days of when I was born. He had the same M squared as I had. He was going through the same treatment as I. Hardcore brutal. Anybody that doesn't know these acute hardcore cancers, the treatment is beyond hardcore. It's beyond hardcore. It's unimaginable. I mean, I've, I've vital invited the whole time I was in there. I had permission to bring people in. Hey, come on, I posted my Facebook. Why don't you guys come spend the day? And he stayed in the bone marrow transplant unit with me. You know, Megan and Melissa, the young females, went with me one day. You should see them both. Talk to either one of them. You should have seen them, how broke down they were when they left. I don't care. It, it, this has nothing to do with sports, but it does. I don't care if you're a socioeconomist. I don't care if you're a historian. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care if you're a vlogger, a blogger. If the story of Tony Gwynn does not make you cry and break you down, he is the last of the Mohicans, not on Balco. In a time and a place historically where this guy come along, who stayed in San Diego, like Ted Williams, both San Diegoans, San Lafrey, San Lafrey Center, never went for the money, but I lived down there as a boy too, off and on, you know, my, my life, I don't know, why would you ever leave? Family man, loved his wife, loved his family, loved communicating, I met him twice. I got a really great picture of him dug out with his arm around me. This was a guy who loved life, who loved humanity, who in a time of cheaters and liars and fakes was a fucking true shining fucking gem. This is a guy who struck out 438 times in 20 years. 20 years. Guys do that in two years. This is a guy that batted, I believe, five, 358 over a five-year period. Even Ty Cobb didn't do that. Ted, well, I'll talk how backwards American culture is, how they always get it wrong. Sports writers get it wrong. Social economics era, they always get it wrong. 1950s, Sports Writers of America vote, not the greatest athlete in America at the first 50 years of this century, of the last century, the greatest baseball player. As ESPN outside the line, or ESPN does theirs in 2000, they have Babe Ruth way up here. Ty Gobb's numbers dwarf Babe Ruth's numbers. Ty Cobb won. It just shows you the American culture, how they posture and groom and try to rewrite and change history. In a time when everybody cheated, in a time of Mark McGuire, as I said, Mark McGuire swinging Albert Bell's bat, riding Lance Armstrong's bike, there was a shining beacon light named Tony Gwynn. This guy stole bases. This guy won five gold gloves. In 1994, he was going to bat 400. 
There was a guy in this town named Lee Lazzarotta. He was the lead scout for San Diego. I was a, I was a baseball nut. I was a baseball player when I was a kid. That's what started me chewing tobacco when I was a kid, too. This was a guy, he didn't care about the money. He would come up and talk to everybody and ev anybody. He loved to talk, he loved to communicate, he loved people, he loved his city. He was an uh, activist in the human rights way. He could donate everything, his time, his patience, his money, his soul, his being to the community. The greatest athlete of our time, not on Balco, in a time of liars and fucking cheaters. Thieves at all costs. Mice masquerading as men in men's bodies. He was a man in a man's body. He was going through the same treatment as I. It, it, the story of him dying yesterday broke me down. By the way, I believe he was born the exact same day as that phony fucking fraud Bono. 1960, what a year. He was born the same month as me. 1960. I think he was born May 9th. I was born April 10th. We got cancer. He got cancer before mine. He got into his gland. All you people think, oh, these people with all their money could save. You know nothing. You know nothing. You know nothing about cancer. How does this tie into Fukushima? Everything. Everything. The exception of the lies. It's not the exception. The accepting of the lies. The American culture is we accept. Just like right here. The ILC. I'll get some dramatic photos tomorrow as the sun clears. That's not a little bit of snow, that's feet of snow. KSL yesterday, I mean, this is insane. We had major fire warnings and winter storm warnings issued the exact same day in the same place. Wow. Like I said, not a trace. That's fucking feet. The story of Tony Gwynn is the story the last of the Mohicans. It truly is. The last man standing. I think it's so irony that he and Steve Jobs, the two Californians, both died so tragically, so young, and such icons to a culture. Baseball was still king in the 1980s. 1975, the average athlete only made three times the average American. Is that because the athletes made so much? Yeah, more now. But Americans made so much more. Basically, all these things come down to, you can talk about Fukushima, we can talk about the cover-up, we can talk about the Illuminati, we can talk about the 1%, we can talk about things. Ken Burns showed us how much baseball mirrors American culture and American sport mirrors culture. Mark McGuire swinging Albert Bell's bat. And if you don't know who Albert Bell was, the cork bat, one of his own players, when they confiscated and took it, crawled up into the thing. Why The, the, the umpires took it from him. Put it in the Empire's room during the game. One of his old players snuck up, crawled through the tile, went down there and got it. That's what we do. They don't have to find a Jerome Zell Ray. They don't have to find a Saran Saran. They don't have to find a Lee Harvey. There's plenty of you fucking lunatics that'll do it for them. And I want to say this. No one single person has came forward and apologized to Janet Saxon and myself. Without us finding that flash, that freaking video, that bomb went off, and freak whatever it was, Everybody attacked us. No one finds that if it's not for us. We found that. Nobody would have posted. Nobody would post it. Post and the shit I took over that, like I've taken shit the whole time. You know, it's hard to stand on integrity. I mean, factual truth in your face. Now Dana's great work up there, beautiful Dana girl. So many people as the vloggers and the freelancers, the freelance radio watchdogs confirmed it. The mapping show. Right when the jet stream got here, in the exact same places, the levels spiked just like they did in July of 2013 when I reported. Just like they did in October of 2013, just like I reported. Just like they did. The only person on Earth standing right here. It's in the jet stream. It's in the jet stream on 3-11-12. Excuse me, 3-11-11. 3-12-11. 3-13-11. It's amazing to me what a liar, cheater culture and how we go along. Tony Gwynn in 1994 was going to bat for him. He used to call his bat seven grains of pain. He used to go to Louisville Slugger plant and pick out his own bat. 
He was in love with freaking the game of baseball. He was in love with his wife, in love with his children, in love with his town, in love with his community. He was an asset to the community like so many men were, so many women were in America. America, this has never been like this, ever. Everybody says, oh, this is history. No, it's not. It's not. This has never happened. 311 nuclear fission's never happened. A total masquerade party of total fraud and we accept the fucking lies. Not on Balco, Tony Gwynn. When the rest were all on fucking Balco. Was it very, I'll say this. Whose fault? Just like it is. You know, they want to blame it on the fucking Mark McGuire's. They want to blame it on Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds was sitting back, the greatest player in America. Watching cheaters like Sammy Sosa, second tier players, Rafael Palmaro, Mark McGuire, second tier players, shatter records because they juiced on Balco. He says, oh yeah, fuckers, watch this. I sat in that stadium and watched him rip fucking home runs that year, 2004, in San Francisco. I was living in San Francisco. My daughter was living there. I spent a lot of time there then. He's like, oh yeah, fuckers, watch this. Broke the on-base record, I believe, by 80 points. He either hit home or struck out every fucking time he got up. So who's fucking fault? Well, yeah, he was a prick. Barry Bonds is a fucking prick. Walk out, got that. Remember this, Gwynn won five gold gloves. Barry Bonds would even fucking, he, he got pissed. He had to walk out even the fucking outfield. 1994, Gwynn was going to be the first hitter to hit 400. The other San Diego one, he was going to, Ted Williams, and remember Ted Williams, the man he was when World War II broke out. He didn't have to go, he won. He was going to break that record. The Expos, you know who was on that Expo team? Yeah, Pedro Martinez. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. Mosey Salu, I mean, wow, 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 wow. They were gonna, he was gonna shatter that record for the first time since 1941. Oh, the fucking strike. The irony of that is the exact same time Bill Walmart Clinton. Baseball betrayed us, Bud Siegley fucking betrayed us, America fucking betrayed us, no men left. Bill Clinton signed NAFTA. Ran and called himself the next fucking John Kennedy. He was no more a fucking John Kennedy than I was a fucking astronaut. We got betrayed 1994, hardcore betrayed. We didn't vote. Prospero said, whoosh. Prospero warned us that he was fucking really a neocon, fucking the Queen's puppet, a Rhodes Scholar in fucking a sheep in wolf's clothing. He warned us. Of course, who would ever believe Barack Obama was a fucking neoconservative? But, I mean, the Queen's puppets. NAFTA. The story of Tony Gwynn made me fucking break down so hard to cry yesterday on so many legs, exactly my age, going through the exact treatment as me. I know what he's going through. I know. People have no fucking clue what we go through. No clue. You'd be able to watch it in real time. Last of the Mohicans. Oh yeah. The greatest athlete of our time, mowed down, fucking dead. They're all gone. There's not one single fucking... Who's left? Who's left? Everybody's lock, stock, barrel. Religious leaders, Joe, I fucking died so you could be rich. We have no religious leaders. We have no senators. We have no fucking athletes. We have nobody. We got fucking nobody. Nobody. Not on Balco. They're all on Balco. It's a giant masquerade party. Fucking lies. Another fucking brick in the fucking masquerade party fucking wall. Fukushima's the greatest fucking lie ever pulled over, but you all know. And everybody goes along with it. They don't hold anybody's feet to the fucking fire because men are not men. And cheat at all fucking costs. Cheat at all fucking costs. When Tony Gwynn proved to us that you didn't have to fucking cheat to be great. You don't have to cheat to be great, but nobody gets that. Nobody understands that. I want to talk about one last thing before I go. The synchronicities. You know, Luann, they call her Mick Jagger's freaking girlfriend, which I grew up with her right here. I always want to do that gig in front of the physical graffiti building. Doing those videos, you know, with the picture of the building on the Led Zeppelin physical graffiti album cover, except for Warhol. Three years ago, I'm standing in Manhattan. In the winter of 2010, we had those hardcore winners standing there. With my sign, Post Ignorance, that's how I got to know the area. I was trying to correlate Post Ignorance with the 100th anniversary of the Shirtwaist Fire, 311-25. Those winters, I spent all winter there. I was at the MoMA, and the MoMA had told me, I had some friends that worked around at the MoMA, that artists, you know, and they're like, hey, it's then exposed that Pallock's 
and Motherwell and I believe de Kooning's original studio was over there on 8. Go find it, Kev. So I shot this crazy little video sitting right there. This is a crazy story. Sitting right there, I shot that video. And everybody's like, what? Nobody watched, nobody give a shit. This is Paul's original studio. And then I found this PhD. This woman had wrote, the PDF was online about talking about where he was discovered. By the way, where I laid my soup cans and those guys walk across that, that's Eric Oppenheim standing in the back. So go through my whole cancer gig, whatever. You know I went there this year, the 311-11 gig. A lot of people showed up. There's a guy show up, he doesn't say much. There's a lot of people that show up. Tom Blewett says, okay, after the whole event, let's go eat. He says, I, I and he knows that city like no other. And he says, Kev, I know what you can eat, what do you get? This place is great. He says, where you should go, it's a new Mexican restaurant, whatever. So, okay, it's on 8th. We walk over there. I'm like, oh my God, I don't say a word. We walk in there, it's the exact fucking place. We're sitting in that old studio. No one knows that. There's a guy, and he starts talking to me about Kevin, blah, blah, blah. So he hangs around, we go, I said, let's go to Physical Graffiti and make that video. I says, I want you to walk by like this, and then turn your head and then walk back like that. You could tell he knew, and I'm like, you didn't tell me who he was, he didn't tell me. So later he and I, we went and had a beer. And he says, you know, I'm Dennis Oppenheim's son. Like, wow. We? Dennis Oppenheim, wow. Name. What an incredible artist. So he was so amazing, and so I asked him straight up, because I've been watching all your videos, Kevin, and I says, Well, I'm kind of worried I fucked this all up, you know, by my intensity, my radical, my fight. You know, I expected your father was a, one of the greatest artists of a freaking entire era of a total generation. Genius. Did I fuck it up? I got to tell you, artistically, spiritually, as a human, as a person, you did a perfect, absolutely perfect. He says it's such incredible fucking art. And I knew right then, from then on, I've known that everything that I've done is all okay. It's okay. It's okay. And it's fucking worth it. And it meant everything. And that video, and I'll post that little video we walk across. That's Tom Blue. That's the quintessential fucking activist of that city. I mean, Occupy on Balco. Tony Gwynn, not on Balco. That's Eric Oppenheim right there. You know, right at the time that Luann, and by the way, Luann killed herself for the same reasons, the usury complex. She was a fucking quintessential amazing artist. She was not about to be a fucking Walmart target designer. She was to the design world what Pollock was to Drippy. She really was a man. Her and I grew up out in the middle of the boonies on the same road. She was amazing, incredible. Last of the Mohicans, it's true. What a culture and time we live in, an epic time. They're all going, they're all gone. Tony Gwynn's death is really such a hallmark. You know, Steve Jobs is such a giant metaphor to everything, but last of the Mohicans, we live in a culture that's totally fucking upside down, totally hijacked. I'll repost my radio show from day I talk more about this, but I want to talk about this. I don't care who you are, sports writer, historian, professor, artist. If the story of Tony Gwynn does not make you cry and make you break down because it really is the end of America, it really is the, it's like the fucking, you know, in the fucking coffin of what we've walked into. So fucking sad. Stay in tune